It is uh, Gen Con week, and you're probably driving to Gen Con, but I'll tell you who's not. For, for sure, Jason Smith is not. And so much so that he's sulking this week. Like, he's not even going to record a podcast. So I'm here with Katie. Hey! Yeah, so that's Katie. Um, you guys know Katie from other episodes this summer. Um, episode, I guess. And, and that's what she said. We do those videos on the YouTube channel sometimes. Jason just does not feel well is what we're saying like publicly. But Katie and I have been plotting for quite some time now to to get this to happen. So uh, good job slipping him that bacterial infection. And he's really got a Tom Waits voice now, it sounds like. so He does. I had to lick a lot of doorknobs to make it happen, but I was willing to do what I could for the team so I could be on the podcast. <laughs> that is so gross, but I like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope he feels better soon. Um, so this is this is what's wild. I was thinking about this. So like Jason and I like okay I'm gonna read this review that was that was on our podcast page and it's actually really funny um, and I don't know if you left this or not if you did I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> but it said this podcast will change your life all your wildest dreams will come true with this unless your dream is to meet Stefan Feld in which case sorry which is really funny because that goes like that's like a throwback to our our old Stefan Feld like we're stalking him kind of days but. The one that I wanted to read that actually is pretty funny is, uh, this is a great podcast to drive to, but uh, low-key, but informative, sometimes witty. Sometimes witty is kind of, hey, it's a five-star review. I'm okay with it. Sometimes um, witty. <laughs> the, the hosts obviously are good friends and it comes across. So like that's talking about Jason and I, and I was just thinking about it like today, like when it, we decided that I was going to record with you, I was like, I've only really known Jason for like maybe a month before we started our first episode of the podcast. <laughs> right. So, and I think we just have, I think, I don't know, our temperaments just kind of click pretty well. I mean, he's, I would consider him a good friend now, but I mean, like I wouldn't have considered him a good friend two months before the podcast. Like I knew who he was and like, I really was your friend to be honest. So yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird how that works out. I was talking to Jason. I said, yeah, I've actually known Joel longer than I've known you. (laughs) Yeah. I was thinking about that too. That's super weird. So, and like my son who's like driving was like a baby. So pretty weird. Time goes fast. It does. We're old. That's what old people do is reminisce about how quick time goes. Yeah, that's 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 why people tune in, I think. Uh, so yeah, Jason's not feeling well. Um, and also, I, let's be honest, he's saving his energy up for like, I think he's got like four or five rock band gigs this week. So <laughs> or something, I don't know. Something like that. He is playing drums, which is a little bit new for him. Like, I mean, he's played for a while, but that's not his yeah. primary instrument. So it takes more. I have a drum set too, and I I am not I can't play it well, but it's so fun. But is he playing with like the main band playing drums, or is he like doing something else? Yeah, he's playing with the main band, like the night band. Whoa, crazy! Oh no no, That's... you mean like the band that he plays with, like gigs out with? Yeah, oh, is he no, playing no, drums no, no. with them. No. So another band. It's for the worship team at church camp. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha. like last week he played drums for worship team, and I played bass guitar, and now this week he's <laughs> doing drums. That's amazing. Uh, that's super amazing because you're just telling the people if you can just jump in and do that. Um, but that said, my brother, um, who you know, like the youngest brother, yes, um, he he plays bass with like me and a little worship band too, and that doesn't say a lot about the talent level <laughs> required to play bass in a worship band. Thanks, Joel. Ooh, that's sick like an burn. indirect slight slide at me. Thanks a lot. No, I'm sure you're much better than him too. Um, sick burn to him, and he'll never listen to this show. Who cares? He won't. Um, so, okay, the last thing I want to do up top here, this could be a very long show, Katie. We are we don't have succinct Jason going, yeah, let's move on to news now. Nope. Uh, so games, games, a 10-game rule this year. I am only allowed to buy 10 games. I'm at number nine, and it's because I kind of had like a momentary lapse in like judgment today. So number, number someone asked me what they were. Root, I'm happy about that one. I haven't played it yet, but I'm happy I have it. Anachrony, played it, love it. This one's one that like I think maybe you endorsed, but definitely Jason amazed me that he endorsed it. Uh, Harry Potter Battle of Hogwarts. Oh, like yeah. I've heard it's good. I love and that game. Yeah. I really, really do. do. You? Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that my wife will play it. She likes Harry Potter and maybe Luke even. Uh, Blackout Hong Kong, which I love. Like it replaced Mombasa for me. Reckoners, which is super fun. It's like dice rolling cooperative, crazy time. Dice Throne. And this is where, mm, yeah, season one and two, but that's only one game. Uh, sure. and then <laughs> And then this is where yesterday there was a sale on Amazon. And this is one that I've been eyeing forever. And this, the price was like just cheap. So I got it because my wife really likes the DC deck builder. So I got the Teen Titans one. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of like a rough 
slot. I don't know if that was worth one of my 10 or not, but we, we put it in there. And then the last two are ones that you guys own, I think, or like have owned. Mm-hmm. And, I don't, and I don't know. I'm hoping they're good. Chronicles of Crime. Yeah. And then... T- and then Teo T. Walken. <laughs> yeah. Chronicles of Crime, I really like. Jason doesn't, but I think it's because he, it's cooperative and he doesn't always play mm-hmm. well with others. No, he does not like the co-op scene. No, but it's super, I think it's really great because I love um, the Consulting Detective and mm. it's just like a, a, a bit more streamlined version of that. And I think, I, I really think it's good. I think you guys really like it. I think Kristen will really like it. Yeah, it's like a multimedia more version kind of, it feels like to me, maybe. Yeah, it's and it makes it, I think, a bit simpler because you're mm. just going to places and scanning the codes and you're like, oh, okay, what what did I, when I looked at the scene, what did I see? I saw, you know, weapons or I saw bottles or whatever. And you pull those cards out and scan them. I think, I think your wife, really, like, I think Luke will too. I think your wife and kid. Yeah. Play this. Yeah. Do you, okay, so I have like a like Google Cardboard like VR headset too. Like, have you guys ever done that part of it? Like, I've heard mixed reviews on that. Yeah, I mean, we used it. It was okay. It's not necessary though, really. No, <laughs> but it, did it make it more fun? In my opinion, no. But okay, I, don't, I, I think it neither added nor took away. Like, I'm trying to remember though. You don't, you kind of like don't do well with that kind of I, stuff. Though, I do don't. <laughs> I, yeah. I really don't. Which is interesting because Alethea is kind of the same way. Because I don't. I don't. Know if Jason's told you this, but. Her eyes, like her brain doesn't tell her eyes to look together. Huh. So she only, she just chooses one or the other to focus with. And they're equally like the same strength. Like the, she can see out of both of them. Perfect. Uh-huh. She just picks one. So she can't see artificial 3D, but that's it. Huh. Yeah. Huh. So her eyeballs just take turns. Yep. <laughs> that's really interesting. So if you cover up one, she'll just use the other. But she can't see artificial 3D. So I don't really like 3D because my brain doesn't always work well with yeah. that either. I, I, don't know yeah. if, I don't know if it's because of my stigmatism or what, or I just don't like spatial <laughs> things. But yeah. Yeah. So I, that for me, it's not, it didn't, that VR thing didn't really matter. Um, I, some people might really, if you're really into that kind of visual aspect, you might like it. So I've got an Oculus Rift and like this, like the like real actual, like put it on your head, play computer games with it kind of, oh, yeah. kind of VR. Yeah. And I like it unless you have to move. Like if you have to move, I get so motion sick. Ugh. Like you can play Skyrim with the headset on and like I played it for like maybe 20 minutes and then I took my headset off and I was motion sick for two hours afterwards. So I'm not sure <laughs> if I'd like it or not. Yeah. Um, You're looking at a lot shorter time. Like they only time, they did time you on how long you look at like a, a crime scene. So... Hopefully you wouldn't start throwing up afterwards, but yeah, it sounds like it's just totally superfluous, though. It is. It is. Um, okay, so Teo T. Walken. I know Jason traded his copy away. Was it because the price was right, or is it because the game was kind of not great? It's because the game was kind of not great. I mean, oh, don't tell me that. Sorry. Like when I saw it on this list, I thought Joel, we probably could have given you our copy because <laughs> <laughs> it just we. I think it's because we really love Zolkin. Yeah. And um, in comparison to Zolkin, it's really not that great. I. Th- I think people would like it just fine, um, but I think that comparison made it not worth it for us. Yeah. Watch out, Jason, because watch what I'm going to do here. So that game was kind of a disappointment to you guys, huh? (laughs) Well, today we're going to be talking about disappointing games, some news, and what we played. And I guess we'll get right into that now. All right. So in news, uh, when I was looking through, I actually did look through the news. Jason is the only one that can do research. Um, yeah. He mentioned this game to me, and I thought he'd actually talked about it on the podcast before, but maybe the fact that he didn't means that I don't listen to the podcast enough. <laughs> but the first game I want to talk about is Tattoo Brawl, No Paint, No Game. And this is actually... I thought this was really cool because I love the theme. You're a tattoo artist. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the show on Spike called Ink Master, where these tattoo artists are competing against each other to be the best tattoo yeah. artist. Um, I love that show because I have like a weird crush on Dave Navarro. I don't understand that, but whatever. <laughs> it's the eyeliner. <laughs> it is. It's the guy liner. Um, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so the show is where these different tattoo artists are competing. And you do the same thing in this game. It's basically like a contract fulfillment, kind of hand and resource management. You want to get clients to your chair. You're getting, they have like a certain type of tattoo they want. So you have to make sure you have that kind of design either in your own like repertoire or you can get it from like a shop. Then you have to get the paint to do it. You can also, um, there's only primary colors and you also have to use an action to mix paints. Uh. Um, which this sounds so good. It sounds really cool. So then you're like, 
And then there's a time element where you have so much time on this clock. I'm not quite sure how that works in order to actually complete the tattoo and then cash it in to get the money for it. And at the same time, people can um, like steal clients from you or paints from you. I feel like you don't necessarily have to play that way, but there can be a mean element. So Jason was like, I think it seems kind of mean, but I think that seems kind of cool. You're a, a tattoo artist. So I mean, yeah, and, and it looks like the components look really cool. It's got like these inset boards where you have your own um, kind of workspace. So the paints kind of go in this little tray so they don't bounce around. Your clients fit in this little chair that's kind of an inset and the price is right. You can get the base game, which has like that inset, boards and stuff for 29 bucks. That's crazy. Which is great. The deluxe edition, which has like metal coins and like a couple other extra things is like 49 bucks. So it's a really, it looks really reasonable and it looks really fun. And I love when, like, I actually care about theme and like Jason. So when people right. do neat, you know, kind of obscure themes, I'm so glad to see that. So there's 13 days left. Same. That's why I back smartphone. I'm like, hey, it's an economic game about something that's not like beer and bread trade from the Mediterranean. You know, I mean, like no nobles in sight, none of that. Right. So, I mean, I did back smartphone and that's kind of pinching me for like not wanting to back another game right now, but this one sounds really good. And like, I don't know, 49 bucks for a deluxe edition is crazy too. Like I meant to go just definitely look this one up and I don't know. It sounds really cool. Yeah. I think Jason like favorite it or whatever on Kickstarter. He might actually back this one. He want, wanted to, you know, see if he could review it or something, but I don't think they have any yeah. copies available. But um, I think with with $29, even a cheapskate like him is really considering backing this because it's just a, a cool concept and it looks like it'd be a fun game. So that's Tattoo Brawl. No paint, no game. It works for his no $50 above games, above $50 games rule too. So, I mean, yeah, it's well within there. He's hard and fast that rule. For real. I, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> All right. Speaking of kind of unconventional uh, board game themes, the next one I found, and Jason was so proud of me, it's Guar versus Time. <laughs> like the Guar? The Guar. Like Sadamagogo Guar. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they, they came out of their 15 years of hiding. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I was looking. It's a deck builder. So you've got all the guys from Guar, like all those crazy characters. They did the art. Um, they created some new things in like their own Guar universe. Um, and so it's a deck builder where you're fighting off these villains, like Mr. Perfect and Cardinal Sin and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but just their campaign itself is crazy. So this is a little expensive. It's $60. To, so long, Jason. You're out. Get the game. He's out, even though he really, he's like, maybe if I ask, they'll send me a review copy. He really wants to get into this game. Uh, but $60 is a lot. But they have all these extra things going on in their Kickstarter. Like, um, there's a $5 pledge specifically to go towards raising money to get them to go be at Gen Con in 2020. They said, <laughs> like, play at Gen yes. Con? Yes. Oh my gosh. Are you, that is, that is insane. They said if they raise $250,000, they will play at Gen Con in 2020. And, I think a lot of people want to get in on that. Like, and I, I think this just hit Kickstarter because there's, I think maybe 25 days left or 20, somewhere around there. So there's still a lot of time. Um, there's also different pledge amounts where you can, they call them like loopholes. There's one if you don't want to actually get the game, but you love Guar, you pledge, I think it's like $150, but they'll send you like these pics from the band hmm. and take a, uh, like a certificate of authenticity and you will get to go backstage and meet them at the next concert that's nearest you on their tour. Hmm. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty like actually a good value. Like I think VIP tickets to see Guar backstage and get some memorabilia would be probably more than 150. Right. So it's not bad. They have crazy stuff. Um, There's another one where you can get the game and it'll be signed by them. It's like a, like a limited run number and they'll send you the pics and you can go backstage and talk to them. They even have like random stuff. Like if you don't want the game or you can add on, it's like add ons, like $20 to get a photocopy of one of the band members butts and they'll sign it too. <laughs> <laughs> It's just totally... So, like, Guar is legitimately involved with this. That's crazy. Guar is legitimately involved with this. They're super involved. They did the artwork themselves. I mean... that's That gives me a lot more respect for Guar, that they were like, hey, a deck building game. That works for us. Right. Uh, the Kickstarter page is really cool, and it talks about, you know, if you're really into Guar, but you're not into games, 
this is still accessible for you. If you're really into games, not into Guar, you might be into Guar after playing this game. Yeah. I'm a bigger Guar fan now, like <laughs> knowing that they're like this cool. I don't know. I always just thought, oh, they're the heavy boys. Look at them. They sure are crazy. They they certainly are crazy. I don't know if I'd want to see them in concert because their costumes are uh, slightly disturbing, but they are in one of my favorite movies of all time, Empire Records, uh, which I love. And Empire Records is a really good movie. It's very cute. It is so good. Mark, you love Guar. Why don't you join the band? <laughs> so I inadvertently love Guar because of that movie. And I would probably play this. Jason will never let me buy it because it's sixty dollars plus so um maybe we'll uh, we'll search for it after it's been produced they said the game's already it? made they've done it all they're just um doing the kickstarter to be able to like produce it and then get it out there this just in there's another kickstarter G- that's on kickstarter brand new it's um it's only for 60 dollars total it's to get you a copy of the guar game that's pretty <laughs> cool uh empire records do you think it holds up or is that like one of those like we were in high school movies? I think it holds up. I watch it all the time. I at least watch it once a year on Rex Manning Day, which is April 8th. I, I really like it. Like, I like that they screw with that kid that like shoplifted or whatever. Oh, like, that's yeah. really, really fun. But like, Liv Tyler wears me out. Actually, not Liv Tyler. It's um the one that sucks on lemons. Like, we're sucking on lemons face, girl. Renee, Renee Zellweger. Zellweger. Yeah. She wears me out, man. Like, I'm like, why are you so insecure? And like, oh, you're a wreck. And like, I think that's what her character's <laughs> supposed to be. She is. So she did a great job. But like, I mean, like, she wears me out. But I do like that movie. The soundtrack is so good, especially if you're a 90s kid. Like, that's what I, I love about yeah. it. It's- so is the Angus soundtrack. Are we, we could do that too, right? Top 10 favorite soundtracks and just skip the board game. Sure. Uh, I'm not ready. All right, fine. Um, I, I have, this is like special Joel news. Like I have actually a couple little things. Uh, Richard Berg, not Richard Borg. Richard Borg's the much more famous designer. Richard Berg is like an older designer. Um, he designed, amongst his games that he designed that were like really famous were, were like just war games, but the campaign for North Africa was his. Mm. And that's the game that's notorious for like being 10,000 hours long and you play it in real time. And like, I think people have completed full games of it, but like you play it eight hours a weekend for years, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, so. Um, it's crazy. Like, and, and the details in that game are insane. Like you have, if you're the Italians, like morale goes up if you remember to put pasta in their <laughs> rations or can like put pasta in their rations, like stuff like that. So he, he passed away though, uh, in the last week or so. So, um, I mean like, I don't know, we're just going to start seeing more of that. I mean, our board game designers, our, our Mount Rushmore people, you know, are, are getting up there. And so that's what I think when you do go to things like Gen Con and you get to meet someone like, you know, Richard Garfield or something like that, you should, you know, but, yeah. um, I mean, not that Richard Garfield's old and going to die soon. He's, he's a pretty young dude, but like, are you the grim know, reaper Al- of board game Al- designers now, Al- Joel? Al- Alan Moon, maybe? I don't I'm know. I'm calling you cool. Alan Moon. You're on Joel's list. He's coming for you. Scythe Alan and all. Moon, um, Oh boy, uh, uh, yeah, that that might come up later too. It sounds like I'm in no way uh, associated with your demise, Alan Moon. I want you to know, I love you and respect you. And when she said "sight," that was not foreshadowing. <laughs> um, so then the other one too is uh, there's this company called Hex, and this is a really fun little story that I totally connect with because like ah, botched Kickstarters, man, they're kind of hitting me like close to home right now. Um, they have a they have a Kickstarter that's three years old or so called Doors in Trouble, and they like haven't shipped it yet. It's, it's still not been backed Whoa. and they had the gumption to go out. Gumption's a, a polite word. I think that I could use here <laughs> to go out and start another Kickstarter before they delivered this one that's three years old. Wow. And so they put this Kickstarter up and obviously it was just full of comments of like, Hey, this game looks great, but when are you going to fulfill my three year old Kickstarter that hasn't been fulfilled? So I, I think that that second one called uh Yokai city of crime got canceled. The first one's called doors in trouble. So if your company is called hex, and your game's called Doors in Trouble. Like, it's just not a good sign, probably, no. anyway. <laughs> your Kickstarter is in trouble. Your future yeah. is in trouble. So that that was just kind of an interesting, like, dramatic little thing. And, like, I, I ah, uh, man, I uh, I did a review this last week for a game that's really great. And I'm not, I don't want to get into it. Because, honest to goodness, like, it, like people are getting litigious with it. And I'm trying to stay out of that mess as best I can. Mm-hmm. It was a really good game. But it just, the Kickstarter campaign, people are really unhappy with. And so, I don't know, just buyer beware on those Kickstarters. I think people just need to remember that sometimes it's not a store i mean like if they decide they just want to take your money and say we have this amazing board game we're going to make you and then they don't do anything with it there's not much you can do i mean because it's you're investing you're an investor not exchanging for goods and it says right on kickstarter all over kickstarter so even though we've kind of made it our pre-order system now like it could go south so just buyer beware i guess um so that's it man i i guess wow we're only 40 minutes into this show and we're through (laughs) news already (laughs) i guess we should move on to games played (laughs) 
right. Since uh, Jason and I have been at church camp like last week and we're heading there again this weekend. Oh, you played so many games. We did play so many games um, because we stay up late. We put our kids to bed and then we hang out in the dining hall with the other older people and we play games so is one of them brandon one of them is brandon oh i love brandon he's great he, he shout loves out you to too. brandon well cool i'm looking forward to hanging out with brandon and his family in the future brandon and Josie are great and so they did play with us pretty much every night uh since brandon works thirds he's good at staying up late good job brandon we're, we're just putting you out there bud but we love you <laughs> it's true he'll be excited to hear himself talked about he does love to feel special yeah, it'll be he, he'll be the first person to hear this podcast. Period, <laughs> from what I understand too. Yeah, I think because I think he's working this weekend. So one of the games we played with Brandon um, is an old game, Bonanza, which uh-huh. is a big favorite of, for people at camp. We brought it out last year, and everyone loved it and played it a billion times. It's so good! It's so good! It shouldn't be as good as it is. But it really is. Um, so it's a set collection thing that people love. And then there's the negotiation part where you get to like drag your friends in and wheel and deal. And people love that. But we actually bought an expansion at Origins because we've been talking about it for a long time. And we got Ladies and Babies expansion. <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So um, it just is the same like bean types, but there are lady beans. And the lady beans, you actually need less cards to score the same number of points um, as like the the male beans. And then the baby beans can add to your number of beans, but you can't actually score points for the, the bean if the babies are on top when you go to harvest. Huh. That's a cool mechanism. Right. It's cool. So then you're trading with people and you say, oh yeah, I want chili beans. Here, I'll let you have my stink bean. But that stink bean can be a baby stink bean, which yeah, will add to your number of stink beans, but you can't harvest it and get points if it's on top, no matter if you have six right. stink beans underneath it. So it's like push your luck kind of too, because you're hoping a grown stink bean will come out. Maybe you have one in your hand that you know will come out, but like... You're hoping you get a grown stink bean before you get to that field out, which is kind of interesting. Right. Or when you're getting to the end of a round and you know there's not much time left, and you're like trying to like get more beans, but you don't want to end up with a baby bean on top. So you're going to hope to cover it up if you have one yeah. or not get one in a trade. So yeah. So what's the, the ladies are worth more points, but do they have anything mechanically different about them? I didn't catch that. No, not really. They're not, they're worth the same. It's like they're worth the same number of points as the man beans, but instead of if I have to have to have like seven to get three coins for the male bean, I only need six to get three coins if I have a lady bean. Mm. Hmm. I'm not sure what thematically that means, but the lady beans so are awesome. Based on the art in this game too, like when I'm envisioning the lady beans, <laughs> I'm envisioning Bugs Bunny dressed up as a woman, like as a pinup model in the like, like, but a bean version of that. Like Jessica Rabbit the bean kind um, of thing. Sort of. They're, they're, most of them aren't like scandalous some of them just are ridiculous and the babies too like there's lots of screaming and crying babies and the art is yeah i haven't even gotten a chance to really sit down and look at them because i was in the middle of the game just seeing what was being played but they're pretty funny the lady beans yeah everybody's got lipstick and some of them wearing hats and it's it's pretty interesting but i think after having played bonanza for so so many rounds because it's been around for forever Mm -hmm. and we've played it a lot with people it's nice to kind of throw something different in there so it was pretty fun Ladies and babies. They've got a few of them, a few different little expansions, I think. But I don't know anything about any of them. This is kind of cool. The thing I love about Bonanza is, I mean, like, this might blow someone's mind because they're new to this. But the game looks like, when you look at it, it looks like a box of, like, <laughs> cereal from the Soviet Union that features beans. <laughs> yes. And then, and then like, it's the most ridiculous art and cheap, bad components mm-hmm. and terrible art and, like, just campy, weird gameplay. gameplay. Yeah. And you're like, man, who designed this game? Oh, Uwe Rosenberg. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, pretty wild. Like, I think I said earlier in an episode that he must have been in, like, middle school when he made this game or something, I think. so Probably. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah, that's a good game. I'm glad you guys played it. Uh, I played a game from Yellow, and it actually comes out at Gen Con. So this is, I guess, not technically a Gen Con preview show, but this is kind of a Gen Con preview. Um, both these are, actually. Um, it's called Little Town, and it's actually really good. Um, it's an old Japanese game. Not old, like maybe four-year-old Japanese game called Little Town Builders that they redid. And you have this big field of grass with like maybe a couple little features in it, like a mountain and a a couple trees Mm -hmm. and a pond. And you place a worker on that board and you get to collect everything around that worker, like in the eight squares around it. So like diagonals even. So if you place next to a two, a two size pond, you pull two fish out of there. So you have two food and then you have, you know, you're next to a tree next 
also, so you get a wood. So that's one way that you can do something in the game. The other way is there are these little city tiles. So you start developing a city and you're building it together. So I can pay the resources. I don't have any resources to start the game, so I have to do some placements to start. But then once I get enough resources, I put a city tile down. And then once I put a city tile down, it does something for me as well. Like it gives me, like there's wheat fields that would give me more food. So instead of only collecting three total things out of the eight squares, as we develop these tiles, I might start getting, you know, I, I go to different places every round and I might get four, five, six, seven things out of these squares. And so you get, and they, they do conversion sometimes. So it's like you might turn in two stone to get five victory points in your town that you, in your little city, like building that you put in your array there, or you might get, you know, a couple food or you just keep getting better and better things. And then, but the catch is it kind of reminds me of like Lords of Waterdeep or something almost where, you know, when you go to like a building that someone else built, you have to give them a benefit as well. Mm -hmm. So like if you go to a spot where you're going to use someone else's building, you you put a little house on there of your color. And so, you know, it's yours. Well, then, well, then they basically have to pay you a coin to get that benefit. So you earn, earn coins from your shops that you build. But then everybody can use them to get more resources. It's actually really good, really simple, super simple game, um, but just a really good introduction to worker placement. Honestly, yeah. Because when you start it, it's so simple. It's like, hey, you're only going to get a wood and a and a and a fish, and then you start adding things on, and you're like, okay, now it's getting more complicated. Like you can get this thing too, you know. So it scales up over four rounds. It's it's pretty neat though, pretty simple, and like it's a yellow game, so it's super adorable. Right. Like all their games are just super adorable. So I liked it a lot though. Is that? Do you have individual player boards, or is there one? big board that you're all playing on one big board in the middle that you're all kind of building one town so oh, okay. it's different than tiny towns it's like one town that you're developing together but then you kind of keep track of your own buildings inside the town by having little houses of different colors so pretty cool i think it'll be i think it'll be a little bit buzzed about i mean like as much as a yellow game gets buzzed about right i think it's i think it's one of their better games they've released recently yeah that sounds cool i totally play that because i've been looking at like tiny towns but i'm worried that that's a little too strategic and spatial for me to handle, but abstract. Yes. I could handle little town, I think. Well, and it's, it's, I think, you know, yellow, they bring games in from Japan sometimes. And this one was a Japanese developed game. And I think Japan, somewhere in Asia, um, but I, I'm pretty sure it's Japan. Um, Probably. but like those Japanese games just have a certain feel to them sometimes Yeah, where it's like super simple actions, but then it builds into something kind of cool and just has a lot of like, good thinky choices, but not just thinky choices for the sake of being thinky, right. like thinky to make the game beautiful. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it has that feel of a Japanese game for sure. Really good. It's because the Japanese are really good at making things simple and yet to the highest quality at the same time. You're biased. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> Katie Smith, um, who is of Asian ancestry, um, but you wouldn't know it based on her name. No, not a anyway. weird name. If you saw my eyes, though, you would know. Um, maybe. Yeah, a little. <laughs> um, well, speaking of Asia, Nagaraja, right? <laughs> right. Different area. Um, so Jason and I also played a couple games just by ourselves. So we were hanging out. Some nice friends. Actually, it was Brandon's wife, Josie, took our kids to like a little pet- Aww, petting nice. zoo. So we were just hanging out. So we played some games. And then one of them was Nagaraja, which is um, like from Asmodee. Or Hurricane, or yeah, all, yeah, yeah, they're all together. I don't know. Asmodee, oh, Asmodee owns, owns everybody. everybody. Actually, Asmodee got sold. I heard that's pretty bizarre what? too. Yeah, I know. I thought about trying to plan that for the news, but Asmodee got sold in the last month or so. Hmm. I don't to, probably to some big investment firm in Manhattan who doesn't care about anything but making money. I, but I mean, I like, bet it's Walt Disney. Yeah. Oh, let's hope. <laughs> So Nagaraja, Peter Pan's Nagaraja. Here it comes. <laughs> it's happening. So um, we actually. Saw Nagaraja at Origins and Jason demoed it and went to buy it because he really liked it and they were sold out. So uh, he did not give up and found, got a copy. So Nagaraja is, it's just two player only. And instead of rolling dice, you're rolling like these sticks, I guess is the best way to describe it. There's a couple different sizes and they have either like pips on the sticks or they have like tilde looking signs on them and uh, you each have a player board that's got kind of a grid and then around the player board flipped over are different kinds of relics and the relics are worth points but three of them are cursed um, so you are flipping o- you are rolling your sticks you have you play cards to get sticks you roll the sticks if you have the most pips you win like a tile and that tile can connect um 
like your entrance to some of the relics or to other places on your board. And so you're trying to connect from the entrance to as many relics as possible because the first person to 25 points wins. Um, and the cursed relics are worth a lot of points, but if you get three cursed relics, the game's over and you lose. Mm. So like different tiles are coming up. You're trying to win the tiles. There's also the cards do different things for you. So if you get like a tilde sign come up, you can play a card and the cards can, you know, actually give you more pips to your sticks or they can rotate your different tiles or they can move another player's tiles or they can put like a bottomless pit on their board that they have to figure out how to get rid of. So it's just, it's not super difficult. At first I thought it was going to be stupid spatial manipulation and my brain wouldn't be able to do it, but it's not really that bad. Like I can trace a path. It's kind of like the board on Rajas of the Ganges where you're trying mm-hmm. to get to those different bonuses. It's very similar. Um, and so it's super fun because you're like, you're not throwing dice, but you're throwing these like, I don't know, what do you call those? Like cubes, but rectangular prisms or something. Sure. Sure. I, I, I haven't seen it, but something that kind of is like dice, but not. Yeah. Which is really, I think it's like a neat little, I, I don't want to say it's gimmicky, but in a way it is because you're essentially rolling dice. They just look different, but it's pretty fun. I don't know if I'm biased because I like whooped Jason really bad, like 32 to two or something, but Ooh. yeah. What, are, are they four sided? Is that why they're shaped that yes, way or something? Yes. Or, okay. They're four sided. So and so they're like different colors. Like there's brown sticks and white sticks and little tiny green ones. And so the brown ones have more pips on them per side than like the white ones. And the green ones are little short ones. So they don't have any pips because they're short. So you're playing cards that'll give you different kinds. Like um, one card might give you four brown sticks. Another one might give you a brown stick, two white and a little green. And so you're trying to leverage how many cards do I want to play to pick up sticks to roll? And then what kind of cards do I want to keep back later to use their power? Hmm. So there's some really cool choices in it. And you get the fun of like chucking sticks. So Jason loves this one. You like it too? Yeah, I do. I really like it. So here's what's going to happen. Jason loves it so much that I'm guessing next week you're going to listen to this show and Jason's going to want to talk about it himself. <laughs> He'll be like, yeah, I played Nagaraja because I, th- I think he actually like really loves this game. He does. Um, but here's how he's going to describe it. Like you described it pretty eloquently and like kind of with a lot of description. He's going to go like this. He's going to go, Nagaraja, it's a good game. You, you toss these little sticks down and you do something with the tile. That's it. <laughs> Simple game. Real good. Probably. <laughs> he likes to just get right at it. He does. No, I, it sounds really cool, actually. And I I mean, like, I am really interested in it, honestly. Um, I mean, for both of you guys to endorse it, I, there's only one game, I think, maybe maybe more than that. But there's one game that you guys both love that I'm just like, uh, about. And and I don't know if you know which one it is. I'll, I'll give you a chance here in a second. But Jason is such a sucker for Push Your Luck. And so there's like a little bit of Push Your Luck mm-hmm. in there with those cursed artifacts, I think. So... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the cherry tree game. You don't like it. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> I, I feel like if you played it earlier on in the day, it, yeah, you might maybe. be okay. Well, I don't have a functioning frontal lobe in my brain, so I don't understand consequences. So, like, that's the problem. Like, I just, I'll just keep drawing pedals, I guess. I don't know. Oh, this is bad, I guess. I couldn't foresee this. So, that's that's my problem, I think. But I, I know, know that you do understand strategy. Like, okay, I want to get this these yeah. many colors. Well, so, I think if you I, understood the rules better and realized, okay, this is what I need to focus on, that might give you, like, a goal. Yeah. So, here's my thing when I played it with you guys. Like, I think I'm going to give my most sincere synopsis of the game. One, it was at the end of, like, playing for probably six, seven, eight hours that day. Mm-hmm. And pretty, pretty heady games. And I was kind of getting tired. And I felt like we were a little rushed with it. Mm-hmm. But the other thing, too, is, like... I try to, and I think it's usually a thing that works well for you, do what other people aren't doing because then you kind of like have room to make points and stuff. And so you guys were both being kind of conservatively. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to push for it and like try and try and go bust or get big points up here at front at the beginning on my first turn or so. And I, I screwed up and didn't do very well, if I remember right. And then, and then like, so I was so far behind the whole game that I was like, I've got to keep just pressing to try and even get really ca- get caught up. So, I mean, like I just played it really, really poorly. I would play it again. Like, I, I don't think it's terrible by any means. I just, I, like the other thing too, is when Jason talks about it in particular, like it's like, it's a, a cult that compels him. Like he just loves that game so much. <laughs> it's the push your luck stuff. Like he loves if it. If he weren't such a cheapskate, I'd be worried about him having a gambling addiction, <laughs> yeah. but he can't stand to spend money. So he would never actually gamble away like our life savings which is like $50 right now, but still he wouldn't do it yeah. because he won't even buy a game that's more than $50. So, but he does love that push your luck crap. I, he just, he can't get enough. He's like a junkie. I think we're all in that like uh 
fifty dollar life savings moment of life right now, and then and then we can get back on track, and it'll be Christmas. So anyway, right. all right, let's hear it for being not one percenters. Um, <laughs> so I played a game called Dizzle, and I am not hearing anything about this game anywhere. But it's from Stronghold, and it's again a, a Gen Con release, mm-hmm. and it's a, a push your lucky a little bit uh, roll and write game. And what you do on it is, depending on your player count, you're rolling a bank of six-sided die. And everyone has a player sheet. There's four levels of player sheets that are, like, level one's really simple, like the most simple puzzle to solve. And then level four is really complex. And there's basically sides of a die printed on the sheet. And there's two X's in the middle of the sheet. You have to place orthogonally to X's if there's no die on your sheet. Or if you have a die on your sheet, you have to place orthogonally to a die. Hmm. And so you're trying to draft these die to find spots for them on your sheet to keep putting more die on there and get to different spots that score points or to create rows or columns. And it's really good because it's it feels a little like a Sudoku puzzle almost because you're trying to like plan ahead and hope that you get the right numbers. And you're looking at other people's sheets trying to take the numbers they're going to want. But the part that – this is where I think Jason would like it. Um, once it gets to a point where you really can't do what you want to do with the die anymore – you can re-roll all the die that are left in the pool. But if you aren't able to play one of the die in the re-roll, you have to give up one of your die on your sheet already. And so that does a couple of things. It pushes your luck to try and get something better. But then you're wagering one of your die on your sheet. And so if it's you and I playing, Katie, and there's three die left in the pool, and I roll and I don't get what I need, I've got to take one of my die off my sheet and put it back in the pool. Now you have four die to work with. Mm-hmm. And so I just give you an extra die to either, if you're going to try and re-roll them, have one more die to work with, or I might have given you a number that you really want now because I can't know for sure. I can't take all the die when I re-roll them. Mm-hmm. So it's a really cool mechanism. Um, and it's really simple to understand. Um, there's basically like, it looks like an app from like the like the app store, um, like for your phone. Mm-hmm. There's little like gems that if you get your die to go on top of these gems, you get like a couple points. If you make a row across, you get 10 points or five points depending on how hard the row was to make then it gets a little more advanced where you have like keys and locks so you have to like put a die on this key first then like on the other side of the sheet there's a lock where you unlock it and there's a bunch of really good points behind that so mm. it's like something you have to work for there's like pairs of puzzle pieces if you get both the pair of puzzle piece you get like 10 points so it's just it's, it's a simple game you're drafting die putting it on the sheet and then and then once you get all the die drafted in that pool that round everyone passes you pull your die off and put x's where they were at and then you do it again and you do those rounds like maybe five or six times Times, and you just have a bunch of X's on the sheet. It's like bingo with dr- die drafting and push your luck. And it's it's super simple, um, but it's, it's really good. And it's good enough that um, my wife played it and loved it. <laughs> and that's like unheard of. <laughs> and um, and then I like joked with her. I'm like, why are you playing the Yahtzee app still when there's a Dizzle app? And she was like, there's a Dizzle app? Like she was actually genuinely excited about it. So there isn't one. Like um. I, 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 pu- I punked her real good there. But um, it's a pretty good little game. And I mean, like I was pretty rough on Roll and Write games a couple weeks ago, but this one's actually a decent little Roll and Write game. Um, I, I like it quite a bit. So um, just it's just worth checking out. I mean, I can't ex- you can't explain it as well as you can just mm-hmm. play the game and just enjoy it and have fun with it. So really simple, really fun. Can play it with grandma kind of game. Yeah, when you first started describing it, I was like, woof, this sounds terrible, no theme, boring. But to have yeah. like those um, like goals to go for, like with gems and puzzle pieces and locks and keys, I think that that would help me get engaged. I don't really love roll and rights either, but this I, and to your wife's credit, I think this is definitely her kind of game. Like I could see her really oh, liking yeah. it. So that makes sense to me. It feels like a classic like Yahtzee type game mm-hmm. or like Racco or something. I mean, like, so it feels like that old fifties Parker Brothers type game, but like mm-hmm. it's, and I mean that in a good way. Right. I mean, it's just a solid gameplay mechanism, you know? So worth checking out, I think though, for sure. And like, I can't imagine, I don't know. I like, I can't figure out how they're going to sell this one kind of in a way because it's just regular die and then the sheets. And I think, there's probably pictures of these sheets all over the internet where people could like print them off and display. Mm. So I don't know. I, I'm guessing they're probably going to do it cheap enough and bank on you want the nice components that work well. And so that's my guess. Or they're hoping no one's thought about your way to scan the system and now you just put it out there for all the listeners to... Well, I think it might have been a print and play game first. Like, I don't know. So yeah, maybe not. <laughs> just kidding. It's very, very much watermarked. If you Wait. print them off, they're going to... It's going to not work well and ruin your printer. So go buy it. (laughs) Um, Anyway, whatever. Um, This game did not disappoint me though, but we will get to some that disappoint us now, I guess. Yeah, let's do it. So it's Gen Con, which means a couple things. People are hyped for stuff and 
people are then in a week or two disappointed with stuff. I think we've all been there where we had a game that we were just like, oh man, I'm so looking forward to this game. And then you play it and you're like, I don't get what other people think about this game, like why it's so good. So I've definitely had some of those in my life. And I'll, I'll just kick it off, Katie. Um, Descent. Like this is one that's like a dungeon crawler. Mm-hmm. And like people love this game. I mean, they just love it. And they talk about how it's like, it's like D and D, but on a board and all these awesome adventures happen and you tell these rich stories and it's just so <laughs> fun and so cool. And I got this game probably like six, seven years ago. And it is just like, it's terrible because here's why it's terrible. In my opinion, it's one of those games that you have to have an overlord overlord for. And now they might have an app, but when I played it, you had to have an overlord and someone stuck playing the overlord then. And no one wants to do that. At least I don't like, I don't want to run a miniatures game for you to go and experience and enjoy. And if you're the person who owns the game, you're always stuck being the overlord right. because you know the rules, you know? So this is one that really disappointed me. It's just kind of fiddly. It didn't seem like that much fun. It just, I don't know. And after having played D and D like a few times in my life and really enjoyed it, like had a good immersive like campaign, this just doesn't match up at all. Like that theater, of the mind's so much better. Mm-hmm. And this is just trying to be that. So that was a huge disappointment. Descent, and that was even two point Yeah, I've never played this one, but I have. I've played another like dungeon crawl that's based off D and D. And again, like it just. <sighs> I know other people love it. Yeah, it's just not as good when you... And I actually played it with my D&D group. And I was like, why mm-hmm. Why are we wasting our time doing this when we could just mm-hmm. do more of our campaign, which is actually fun, where we get to do like whatever we want and not be held by these little tiles that we have to flip over. And yeah, that makes sense. My my brother, Matt, last three like mm-hmm. D&D type things I've done with him... He he's pretty insufferable to play with too. Like <laughs> if you if you're in the right mood, he's fun. But if you're not, he's he's disappointing to play with too. The last three things I've done with him were one was Dungeon Crawl Classics, where we had these randomly generated characters based on die rolls, and he was a beggar with his only starting item. You get one starting item, and usually it's like a carpenter's like hammer or something. You know, he was a beggar with a bowl of cheese spread. So like he role played really well. He's like I'm a beggar. And it was all randomly generated. He's like, I'm probably hungry, so I'm going to eat my cheese spread. That's the first (laughs) thing he did before the game even started. So he was walking around with an empty bowl. And so then we'd like come across like a magical creature and it'd be like, what are you going to do in your turn? He's like, I'm going to try and summon more cheese dip. And that's all he did for the whole game. Like pretty funny, but really, really like not the point. Right. Then and then and then the other time we played kids on bikes, which like I had this awesome, you know, like Stranger Things, this military base has crazy stuff happening, kind of stuff going on. And just as a footnote about this town, it used to be like a circus town I had as a part of its history. Like I was I was the Ooh, DM that's for this. super creepy. Yeah, and it was a really cool setting, like and they were all like children of circus performers, so they kinda like had the whole like like Dick Grayson thing where they might have been like really acrobatic or whatever. Yeah, carny freaks. Well, awesome. R- right. And they were. There was like a little person in the group and just all kinds of co- co- cool stuff. Like it could have been Goonies meets like Stranger Things mm-hmm. meets all these awesome things. My brother insists on like, he's like, is there like a town hall? I'm like, yeah, there's a town hall. He's like, all right, I'm renting wrestling equipment. We're going to start our own wrestling league. I'm like, <laughs> what? Of course. And then the time before that, he, he spent half an hour trying to figure out how to – um steal all these towns musical instruments i i so he put on a musical production about trying to entice them into into giving them all of his instruments he rolled 20s like four oh times gosh. in a row so we got the entire town's like array of instruments so, so he pulled a, rev- anyway. a reverse music man essentially yeah so so another fun thing is we're well past 40 minutes right now katie and we are like a halfway done with this episode which is awesome <laughs> You guys, on your way to Gen Con, that long drive is going to seem so short. It's going to be so good for you. Just going to listen to Joel and I yammer on. All right. So anyway, I'm done ranting about let, being let down with RPGs, <laughs> in particular Descent. Okay. So mine is going to upset a lot of people because that's the reason why it's a disappointment to me is so many people hyped it up. And that's World's hey, not, Fair. Not me, Katie. I'm with you. Okay. World's Fair 1893. And I... S- think so little of this game that on our show notes i put world's fair 18 whatever because i didn't even right. bother to actually memorize the title <sighs> i i love the columbian exposition which i think is the world's fair from 1893 like i love it and when you go to chicago you see all these awesome like relics of it like the entire museum campus is there because of this world's fair and i'm like a huge fan of that and then the art looks amazing on it and then your husband of all people was like, it's a good filler game. I yes. was like, oh, okay, cool. I, I can't be disappointed by him. And then you get it out and it's like, pick a thing. Okay, cool. Or put a card somewhere. I mean, like, it's not very good. Right. And the artwork 
isn't really that great. So Jason said, oh, yeah, it's a pretty good game. And then Kim, God love her, she went on and on about how great this game was. It's in her top 100, like towards the top, like all this stuff. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fine, I'll play this game. And it, I was super disappointed. It was like the gameplay was completely boring, which yeah. I can sometimes overlook if the theme is really great. And I feel like the things I'm doing, however boring they may be, a like contribute to this bigger purpose or me working on a strategy to get like mega points and like getting like an engine going. There is none yeah. of that. None no. of that at all. The game could have been like dimpled like spots on a wooden board with marbles of different colors on it. Like, I mean, honestly, like the way how you like put your little things around that like Ferris wheel yeah. and then like some card play in it, but it's, I didn't like it much either. No. And my, I think my children could play this. No problem. And that's actually not a rousing endorsement for this because it's like, that's how little you have to do with like a trained monkey could have moved my cards around. And I feel like I would have actually maybe gotten more enjoyment out of that than actually playing this game. Yeah. It was super no, I, disappointing. I, yeah. I, I didn't love it either. Um, And like the art is kind of cool in it, but then like, it's not very present in the game either. Right. Exactly. Like the cards are basically solid colors if I remember right. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's trauma, but I don't remember this game super well. But I remember just thinking, like, and I think it was the same, maybe the same people who endorsed it to me too. That I was like, <laughs> right. oh, cool, it's on clearance for eleven bucks. Now I know why. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, it's fine. It's just not great. Um, nope. So my, I kind of like, I'm sensing a theme with mine. They're kind of Ameritrashy games, like thematic games. My number two is one of the first games I ever bought. Um, betrayal at the house on the hill mm -hmm. and like it was because people were like oh it's like you live in a horror movie and it's a thematic experience and it's so fun to go through this thing and like role play as a character and Bull crap. blah 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 yeah not at all and like I don't know if you've ever played this game or I not have. but it's it's like the little clips on the side of it fly off and you're like I don't know if I had a lot of life or none and then and then like uh, the tiles are like either like kind of campy or super gory and i'm like what mm -hmm. and and then somebody tried to tell me it's just like uh it's just like a horror movie it's so thematic and i like to them said oh you mean like in like every horror movie where halfway through you take an intermission and then all of a sudden the characters switch roles and become like <laughs> totally different like i don't know so like yeah it just i didn't care for it much i did see where somebody re-themed it as scooby-doo i thought that might be kind of fun mm. but yeah i wasn't into it yeah i also like this definitely would have been on my list if I hadn't seen that you did it because I, I even played this when they did the other version. Um, gosh, didn't they retheme this or something? They had, well, they have Legacy now and then they had, oh yeah, they did. They did uh, Betrayal at Boulder's yes. Gate. Betrayal at Boulder's Gate. So I, I played that thinking, okay, maybe I just am not into the theme because I don't ever watch horror movies. I mean, the mm -hmm. occasional like Vincent Price or whatever, but. Those aren't, those are campy, not scary. Um, it <laughs> still was the same disappointingly boring game, um, that I felt like I never felt like I had a chance of winning. I never felt like I could really develop a strategy. Like I was just blindly blundering around these tiles and be like, Oh, okay. I guess I'll pick this thing up. Oh, okay. I guess I'll try to fight this guy. I, <sighs> Yeah, it's awful. You lost me when you said Vincent Price because I thought about this really awesome YouTube YouTube series I used to watch called Yacht Rock, and Vincent Price was in it. Like somebody portrayed <laughs> Vincent Price. Wow. And they and Yacht Rock is like you know like obviously like uh, like Steely Dan mm -hmm. and stuff. And the way how Vincent Price like requested music is he said smooth music. It was just really funny. To I, me. I love and, Vincent Price actually quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Vincent Price is pretty great. He's irreplaceable. True. Um, and there's a guy who tried to replace him too. I don't remember his name, but he's a very bad imitation. You guys know who I'm talking about. The other guy with the thin mustache. Um, yeah. Betrayal at the House on the Hill was mine, I guess. Yep, that's a good one. And I totally agree with that. Mine, this is gonna this is gonna rock you, Joel. You're not gonna be happy with me. I I I don't like this. I don't know. What is this? So my my second one is Vinos. Whoa. I, I, oh. Okay. Now. What don't you like about it? Okay. So I, lo I love Uncle Vito. You know. You know I do. Mm -hmm. I, oh, would, Uncle Vito's I, the best. I'm ready to hang out in Portugal with him any, any day of the week. Drink some Vinos and Lisboa. Yeah. Cheese, Vinos, whatever. But this game. And to be fair, I got to tell you, Joel, part of it is how you explain how to play, I think. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Because that was the one, one, the one experience I had with this game. I played with you, and 
You haven't played on Jason's um, like easy to understand. No, board? I haven't. Oh, you should try I, it again. I'm, and and I think I will. But the problem was you and he both hyped this game up real big. And plus, I think there's already a hype because it's Vitala Serta. And I love the Gallerist. That's probably one of my favorite games. It's definitely in my top 10, if not my top five. I love the Gallerist. Um, and so I was really excited to see another game. Because I think this might have been the second Vitella Serta game, maybe the third that I played. I just felt like like my decisions were kind of arbitrary. I um, mm. the board is boring. Um, I didn't quite understand what was going on with like the wine fair. Uh, yeah, I felt like I was like treading like water or like sand and like a pit it just i couldn't get anywhere i couldn't get any traction i wasn't going anywhere nothing made sense and it wasn't even pretty to look at and i didn't feel like the theme really came through which i fall back on that if all else fails in a game it just was built up so much and i just did not enjoy it like in the what least. do you think of viticulture do you like viticulture? i do like viticulture quite a bit so okay and then you played viticulture first yes i played viticulture first yeah I wouldn't. Uh, huh, I wonder if that had anything to do with it too. But like to be to be fair too to to like you and be harsh to myself. Like I have gotten better at explaining <laughs> games. I think in the last mm-hmm. year. But like this one, I had a tenuous at best grasp of that wine fair. Yeah. So like, and that wine fair is kind of a, kind of a dog. Um, and actually, if I'm gonna play Vinos, like I go back and forth on it. If I really want something crunchy, I play that silly wine fair on it. Mm-hmm. But then on mine, you can flip the board over, and the wine fair is basically non existent. It's like a if you have the most points on your best wine, then you get this thing. There's not like you're trying to judge it on four categories that are cumulative over the course of a year kind right. of thing that is on the other one. So, um, but yeah, I, I think, I think your criticism of it is fair. I feel like it could be a number of themes on it that you're going to these places and then doing something to put something mm-hmm. on a player board. And it does feel like that mostly. Like, I don't know. Like, I think with with Vinos, like, you feel like you're giving wine tours. Or not Vinos, Viticulture. You feel like, hey, I'm giving, I'm, I'm developing a little gift shop here. And that's going to get me some more points. And now I'm giving tours of my vineyard. And I'm buying better grapes. And I have a bigger wine cellar now that I can age this wine in and, like, make it more valuable. Right. Whereas, like, and it's, like, it feels, it feels it feels warm and it feels like you're running a small little vineyard. Whereas in Vinos, like you're running a wine empire and you're more concerned about exporting the wine and like having a national reputation and um, international reputation even. And I think, I think it does feel less thematic than viticulture. Um, But I think mechanically I like it better probably, but I can see where that would disappoint you probably. And like, if I'm going to give another Vitello sort of game a try, I think it would probably be Lisboa at this point. Um, Because the first play of a VTAL game, I'm always like, okay, I think I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to actually make that happen. Um, And I think I'm willing to have that brain burniness happen for um, Lisboa over Vinos. But I, it's it's not that I will never go near this game again. But I, it just was a big letdown from all the hype because I I live in a world of VTAL Asserta fanboys. Yeah, I, I. uh... I would say this too. Um, I I own four Vidal Lacerda games, and it's my least favorite of the four. Mm. But um, and that's new. Like Jason will probably go, "Yes, I knew I it." I know. I thought um, this used to be your number one. I, I like it a lot, but I think all your things that you're saying about it are fair. And Lisboa like blew my mind. I love that game so much. Um, so I would say you're wanting to play Lisboa over this one would be really fair. And then I think probably I like Gellers more than I wanted to let on. <laughs> but I was like, I like was kind of like holding a grudge against the fact that it was out of print for a while and I couldn't get a copy. Right. And then I traded for a copy and have it now. So now I'm willing to say, yeah, it's a really good game. So you guys were right. I was <laughs> wrong. You're both handsome and I'm not very attractive. You're <laughs> smart and I'm not very intelligent, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, no, I'm with you. I, I, I don't like that you don't like it, but I mean, like I get it. It's fair. I'm not going to try and change your mind. Yeah, I might come around to it. But yeah, I'm sure it'll never be my favorite Vitala Serta game. Oh, man. I don't know if this is going to hurt Jason more or if you were like, yeah, um, me and Dave Navarro like shacked <laughs> up. Um, He'd probably be high, pretty excited for you, actually. Give you a high five if that happened. I, know, I don't know if Dave Navarro, he, he's a little sketchy sometimes. Like, um, actually, Dave Grohl is way higher on the list than Dave Navarro, but. You know, I think Jason yeah. would be cool with either one. He's like, can I like hold their guitars? Okay, whatever. <laughs> 
Yeah. Did you, are you having a, a Dave baby? Cause cool. <laughs> like they can be in my right. band. <laughs> I don't think Jason's quite that chill, but I think he will be very upset that you don't like Vinos. Um, He's like, you just need to give it another try. And part of it was cause Joel explained it really badly. And you know, he yeah. just threw you right under the bus on that one. Yeah, that's fine. I deserve it on that one. I think that was another one of those. This is after six hours. I'm trying to explain uh, the game yes, kind of things too, probably. Yes. And I think um, your brother was also involved, which usually doesn't uh, bode well for a gaming experience for me. Oh, yeah. He, man, amongst the worst gaming experiences that I've ever had is when I explained all of Brass while he was on his phone texting and Snapchatting. And then we started playing and he was like, explain it again. And I was yeah. like, are you kidding me? Like, that was not cool. But he's really getting dogpiled this episode. But good thing he won't listen to. <laughs> yep. Um, Great. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, my number one most disappointing game of all time, and this is, goes back a few years. Um, this game is called Gear World, The Borderlands. And it's a re-implementation of a game called The Borderlands. And The Borderlands was like a classic game from the 80s that people loved. Like, they were like, this game's so good. And it's a great negotiation, like resource gathering kind of war game. Um, and it's, it's like a risk replacement in the eighties that was just really good. And it was the game from the eighties that everyone said deserved a reprint. And it was just this awesome game that doesn't get the love it should get. And it was designed by the people who made cosmic encounter and, um, the people from who, uh, Klaus top Tobler or whatever his name is, Klaus T T tuber, whatever his name is, yeah. the guy who made Catan. Like cites this game as being a, a huge inspiration for him with making Catan. So I'm like, man, this game's got like racehorse pedigree of like Secretariat or something. It's <laughs> got to be a win. And then on top of it, I was super into steampunk stuff at the time, and they made it a steampunk dystopian theme on it. And I was like, oh, this is this is gonna be like the best thing ever. And then I got it home and punched it out, and the tokens on it were so big, like these little resource tokens that you put on the map to collect. They're so big. They like you couldn't get them all on the map. It was just uh. so clunky and cluttered. And then it was like supposed to be a negotiation game, kind of, but it just didn't work. There's this river boat that goes through the middle of the board, and it's just bad, 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 bad. And like I know I'm not alone because you could find copies of this on miniature markets, like bargain sales for like seven bucks for years, and it might even still be there for like wow. seven bucks. And it it might be worth seven bucks, so you can just look at it and go. He, he was right. He was right. There's a lot of junk in this box. So um, hyped up for generations, supposed to be this like amazing pedigree of a game and ends up being basically unplayable. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know a lot about this at all. But I think in looking ahead slightly to my number one, sometimes when you go back to some of the originals, since I've played everything that's come from them, mm. you can see how their forefathers would be a disappointment. <laughs> Yeah, it either goes one of two ways. Like, Kalis is amazing. Like, the first time I played that was well after it came out. And I was like, oh, this is really good. This is like a masterpiece of gaming. But then other ones you go and you play and you're like, eh. Like, I think if you introduce somebody who who's played the games that we've talked about as the games we played this week or stuff coming out at Gen Con, if you, if you put them in a vacuum and they've never heard of Settlers of Catan and then had them go play that game, they'd be like, eh, it's kind of okay, I guess. Like, I don't <laughs> think people would be impressed by it now, you know? I mean, and it's just because games evolve, you know? So, yeah. It's true. What's uh, number one, Katie? All right. My number one, I had a tough time choosing which one, um, but... Just do two. It's fine. <laughs> no. I think the two... Okay, so I have two, but they're on there for the same reason. So one of them is Seven Wonders, and the other one is Dominion, which will yeah. shock people like crazy. The reason is I played Seven Wonders Duel first. Mm. Um, because when we first started doing a lot, getting more into the hobby, Jason and I just played a lot of games, you know, mm-hmm. two player. And that was when a two player game that came really highly recommended. And I, I still love that game. Seven Wonders Duel is great. I just sold my copy, but it's a good game. It is a good game. Well, and you don't usually play with just one other person that often because right. unless you can drag if, Chris into it. If my wife were you, I would love that game too. But like, I think it's a perfect, like, the kids are in bed, let's go play a game game. But, like, that's not my life, you know? Right. So, right. And but. so that worked really well for us. And we played it a ton. Then um, I said, well, we, we love Seven Wonders Duel. I bet, how am I? I'm going to really love Seven Wonders. I like the card draft mechanic um, because I had played Sushi Go, and I really love that. And I think part of that is theme. But also, like, Seven Wonders, I love mythology, yeah. um, Greek and Roman classics, like... I, Civilizations and anthropology. Yes. Yeah. I love that stuff. 
And then I play this game and I was like, what is happening? Well, and beyond that, it's like hyped up to be like, I think it was at one point in the top, at least top 20 on Board Game Geek yes. overall. And I think it was like the number one family game for a long time. Yes. And so everyone's talking about this, like, oh, yeah, you need to play Seven Wonders. Like, it is like, you know, a, an essential. And so we got, we actually bought it and then played it. And I thought, why do we own this game? It was boring. Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like I wasn't getting any traction, like to get anything like in some words dual i always felt like okay you know i can build these wonders or there's like these science achievements and like you kind of supposedly have that in the same seven wonders but it it wasn't they don't sync very well and i feel like you don't get maybe it's because you're playing with more people you don't get the opportunities to make that synergy happen but it just fell super flat and i even played it with some other friends and they're like i don't get this game like i don't they had trouble understanding it and catching on um so then i introduced sushi go to them and they're like oh yeah i get this like they understood the card drafting so it just yeah it was super disappointing and sad and so i think it's part of that was because i played duel first and i had a lot more expectations for seven wonders and so that's kind of what happened with dominion i played a lot of other deck builders first like i think i even played harry potter battle for hogwarts before this one but tanso kore which like Everyone who has played that game, which I'm looking forward to playing it like fairly soon, hopefully. Yes. Everyone who's played it said, I don't care if it has the most misogynistic theme in the world. It's mechanically amazing. Yes. And for me to actually be behind that, when at one point I was probably kind of a femme Nazi and, you know, would like punch dudes that tried to hold open a door for me. I loved Hunter Quarry and I will play that at any time. Like, I don't care if it's all these scantily clad women and you're making them work for you. Whatever. The mechanics of that deck builder are amazing. And so playing those two games really made me fall in love with the mechanic of deck building. And I think I played Clank as well, the Mm. initial Clank. So then everyone's like, oh, Dominion, like this is everyone's number one deck builder on all the lists. Everyone's like, yeah, Dominion's number one. And this is what started it all. So I'm like, okay, cool. I got to get Dominion. It really did. It did. But like... Yeah. So they pull it out. We pull it out. We we bought it. We played it. And I'm like, this is it. This is the game that everyone talks yeah. about. All these other people who love deck builders say that Dominion's the best. Like, seriously? Um, and I don't know if it's lack of theme-ish, because that always bothers me. But still, there's not a ton in some deck builders anyway. It just... Ah, it was boring. Super the cards boring. look bad now. They haven't held up. Like, yes. The cards very much look like board games from 10, 12 years ago mm-hmm. now, for sure. And it's like, I don't even understand what the theme's supposed to be. Are we <laughs> building a town? Are we like, so it didn't, I think the first time I played it, I thought I was interested in the fact that like I got better as I played it. Mm-hmm. But, but like I was, it feels like half a game in some ways. Like, what am I ramping up for? And I think other people felt that too. That's why games, like the ones you mentioned, but then like trains where you use your deck mm-hmm. then to do something on a board, like came out of that, you know? Yeah. And so I think both the games you're, you're <laughs> something interesting about both the games that you're, you're, you listed there. They're both games that I owned early on in my board game, like collecting career, probably seven, eight years ago. And then I got rid of them. Cause I was like, I don't think these are that good. And then people kept talking about them and I, felt like I missed something on them or I kind of <laughs> missed them at times a little bit. So I ended up getting second copies of both those games and I have both those games in my collection, mm-hmm. but um, actually Luke has dominion now. Like I gave it to him cause he still likes it, but I think it's that whole, like I'm 15 and I want to act like I'm into like classical music and like <laughs> the finer things in life. So I think he's got to feel like he's into like the classics there. I don't know. And then seven wonders. Like, I don't know that my copy has been played more than once and you nailed it. It's really hard to explain. I mean, it just is because there's so many sets of symbols that you can get, so many victory conditions, like military and just all this different stuff. And you're always going to forget something. And at the end of the game, someone's going to go, well, you didn't tell me that. Well, I, I kind of did. But right. I, if you didn't pay attention, I'm sorry. I don't know. And and so I don't know. I, I think you nailed it. Both those games. And they both are who that they are because they were revolutionary for yeah. a day. And then people were like, this revolutionary thing needs to be made into something better and they did so like dominion i think basically came from a little bit of a game called starcraft where you built decks a little bit and they made it in its own game and then um seven wonders i think can it kind of i don't know if it came out of fairy tale the game but like um that had card drafting in a little bit but they both were like kind of really new ideas and yeah. we see those ideas everywhere now and we've seen them get tweaked but it's like gregorian chants <laughs> like i'm sure that they influenced people to make music that i like now like along the line right. but i don't like gregorian chants you know so, I mean, like, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's because I kind of did this in reverse. Like, I played board games in college. Like, um, my friend got the original, like, cheap-ass games. 
that were just cardboard and you had to use your own stuff. I know. I just since Jason's not here, it'd be nasty boy. I had to do it. So (laughs) we played Kill Doctor Lucky. You know, for early two thousands, I played Bang this also in college, and now those are kind of older. And so uh-huh. then when we got back into it, stuff had evolved since then, and Seven Wonders Dominion were kind of older at the time. And so we worked a little bit backwards. So I, I mean, I, some of that is because of the evolution of how board games went and how I came into them, but I still think they're older games that definitely hold up. And these two just don't. Yeah. I think nostalgia is a big part of why people love them still. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if those games came out today, like I mentioned with that other game I was talking about, like uh, Catan, I don't think it would hold up today either. Like, I just, I don't think these games would hold up. I think people would be like, well, this is really basic. Um, and there are people gritting their teeth and yelling at the radio right mm-hmm. now because Dominion's a masterpiece. I get it. It's super well balanced. It's super well made, but there's other things that have happened since then that I enjoy better too. So, yep. uh, yeah, no drama. We actually played nice together this episode, J- Katie. We did. We, I think, We do. We have this long standing friendship. And, you know, some of it comes with some good natured ribbing or whatever, but there's no real animosity between us. I I like you, Katie. Um, So here are some games that I don't know if you know these much, but these are games that disappointed me too. Um, Agents of Smirch. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's supposed to be like Tales of the Arabian Nights, where it has this cool, like, matrix where you're telling a story from a big tale of stories, but it was supposed to be more intense with the gameplay. Just not good. I mean, it just wasn't good. Um, Android and Android Netrunner, both those games were supposed to like tell a story and like be something cool. Uh, the, the Android was supposed to at least talk about this like detective who's trying to balance his life in this dystopian cyberpunk future and it's supposed to be real immersive and it didn't feel that way at all. It felt like a big mess on a board. And then Netrunner, I really wanted to like Netrunner because I like the idea of like I can build a deck and play something like it's my mm-hmm. sport. But like by the time I got in there, I, I got into that when like my dad's son in a game stuff was going on. So it was kind of the same thing I have now where I had to play a lot of games to get good coverage on stuff and I couldn't play one game much. And so my friends who played Netrunner... Right played Netrunner and that was it. Like it was their sport and they got so good at it that they just would steamroll me and it wasn't even fun. Um, Arkham Horror for mm-hmm. the same reasons that I named a bunch of other games. Like people just are like, oh man, it's a, it's a, it's like living a uh, HP Lovecraft novel and it's so good. And we played on Halloween because it's so spooky. No, it's not. It's fiddly hours to set up and not <laughs> that fun to play. And Eldritch Horror is better. It's, it's not, awesome but it's it's better arkham horror third edition i might check out but we'll see mysterium is one that like people like ran over each other at gen con one year to get a copy just because it's supposed to be so good and i just I don't like it it feels like dixit it's a little simple game that i just don't care for i agree i totally with you on mysterium yeah Wolf. and then doomtown reloaded was another like one of those like living card games that just i liked it but it just died quick legend of the five rings that's one that i you would love it because the theme is like these clans in like in like uh old like samurai times and like you're developing this clan that can either do there's two ways you can win you can take people to court and have them in court through lawyers or like sword fight them and like it nice. was a really cool game and it's based on this older game like universe and it had so many cool things going on with it and i literally bought 200 bucks worth of corsets so luke and i could play it competitively and we played it like four times and we were like this is just too long it takes an hour and a half to play and it just wasn't that fun rise of augustus is my last one it won the spiel i was like oh this has got to be good it seems simple like bingo and it basically is bingo i don't like it that much and that one's a little more of a hot take i know some people like that game but i don't care for it <laughs> yeah you mentioned a couple like of like lcgs or like ccgs um i definitely had that same experience with star wars mm. destiny i i mean i love star wars and i like the idea especially like i play i like to play like aggro decks and stuff but i'd never i didn't grow up playing magic Mm -hmm. jason did like in his teen years like i you know had friends and was popular so i didn't play magic so when i got into star wars destiny and started doing stuff with it i wanted to really like the game and actually i do i like playing it you know just with like a basic starter set yeah. and me and one other person play it. But when I got into like the tournament scene and all the people who play all the time, it was awful because they're all dill holes <laughs> and they treat people terribly and they're jerks about the game and they're cheaters yeah. and they're not very nice to girls. It's just, it was such a disappointment. Something that I really wanted to, to do and I it was not. I've tried to get into competitive like card and game scenes like a couple times. And I wanted the LCG to not have this, but it still does to some degree. But like the ones that are collectible card games, like Destiny and Magic the Gathering and Force of Will and all these, 
like it ends up being, I play games because I want to escape reality. And like those games mm-hmm. bring reality back in of like the person who can spend the most money on decks of cards yes. ends up winning, you know? I mean, so. Classism and board games is what it's, it turns out to yeah. be. So, so I mean, like I, it disappoints a lot. No, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Um. Also a game that you love that I was disappointed it. in was Scythe. No. It was Scythe. Also, everyone ran about, oh, the artwork is so beautiful and whatever. And I'm like, oh, it's kind of ugly. Like, I don't, guess I don't care about Russian peasants or something. Like, I just wasn't into it. And then you add, like, the mech mechanical piece, which I could care less about that. You know, I have theme issues. So it was – it just was disappointing. My Little Scythe, however, I really like. And I would play that way over regular really? Scythe. Really? Like, like, what's different? Yes. It's – Quicker? Uh, c- cuter and quicker and – I don't, I don't know. I feel like just looking at the scythe board sucks the joy out of my soul. Like it just wasn't, huh. I don't so, know. So, uh, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a rebuttal on that. Okay. Um, since you and I have played scythe, like I've bought some expansions uh-huh. and amongst the expansions, there's one called the peace board where it really discourages combat and it just makes it into a Euro game. So that's the one that I want to play with Jason at some point. Yeah. Cause then Jason might like yeah. it, but I don't know if you'll like it still. If it sucks the soul out of your life. <laughs> Then you're not going to enjoy it. I mean, it. I like I don't care about combat. Like I like I said, I don't mind like beating up on somebody else, but that's Jason's deal. I would play it again, I guess. It just had so much hype and it really was just okay. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it definitely was hype. I felt that way about Captain Sonar also like Everyone hyped up like, oh, this is so cool. This real time experience. And I played it once at like a front. I really wanted to like it too. And it is fun, but it feels like such chaos. Yes. That you are missing so much going on too that you can't play it well. And if I can't do something well, I don't exactly. like it. And I feel like nobody ever really quite knows their role well enough. And so it's like you have to play the same role several times in order to really get what you're doing and then make sure your group has good enough synergy. It just, uh, yeah. Well, and it feels like that's something that like could be a video game. And oh, yeah. like let video games be good at what they do well and let board games do what they do well. Right. You know what I mean? And like, I just, I don't know. I feel like you don't have to simulate a video game with a board game kind of. Yeah. Um, two beloved games that people are really into and hype up that I can't stand are Broom Service. Jason loves that game. I love it I too. I don't get it. I don't know why. It's, I don't, I don't know. It's just not interesting. Because you get to say, I'm a, I'm a cowardly witch. Oh, okay. Like. I'm a brave witch. Um, It's just fun to say that. I think that. some of that. Like that kind of idea of, okay, am I going to do the same thing as somebody else or whatever? Other games do that better. And I just, I'm Probably. not into it. A Castles of Burgundy, again, another one that Kim is obsessed with. I don't know. High five. I'm with you 100% Why? on this. Why? I, it's boring. It took forever. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, do they have like a dice version of this game or something to make it go faster or streamline it? Cause I think it is the dice version, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just not right. Cause they cut out some more stuff. It just isn't very good. I like I don't I don't get it either. Like wh- it's the most abstract fell game, and most of his games are pretty themeless anyway. Right. Like what's a castle about this? It's diagramming dice onto a plat like a platter. Like I don't, <laughs> and then you can kind of order them. Ooh, that's neat. And there's some like just different patterns and right. stuff. So like I don't get like, it. Collect either. all and the I don't animals. Get how people are so into yeah, it. I don't. I don't know. It's just yeah. I, I'm not into it. And then finally, one that I was super into. I probably should put this on the list, but I didn't think about it till now. Um, is a game called Dragon's Gate College, and it was like way under the radar. Rado played it on. Um, his channel and it looked amazing yeah. and i was like oh it looks like harry potter yeah. like we didn't get the license but it's harry potter yes like this cool like a harry potter like um a little bit of a crunchy game because you got lots of different pathways to go on oh uh, wow it was so you guys played this for the first time at a bgm uh-huh. con like it was just fresh from kickstarter yep. like you guys were pretty hyped about it and you guys played it in the other room while i played something else and i came out and it was so defeating to see you guys i was like jason how was it because you've been talking about it for like a week and he was like mm, it was okay i know it <laughs> like, was i don't think you liked it much either. it was so sad like i thought maybe the artwork that rado had was prototype no it just really looks bad it's just not as fun there's not enough tension happening it just Oh, it was, it was really, it was really sad because it was one. I think we actually backed it on Kickstarter or something, and we never do that. And then it was a big yeah. bust, and that made me really, really sad. It was a turd. Yep. So Jason had his stuff on because he was planning on being on the show, <laughs> and I dug it out of the archives. I think he deleted it, and I dug it out of the archives. So he had Rialto, which I think he just liked that game, like wanted to like that game a lot, mm. and I think it's probably fine. Um, actually, he played that one with Jed, I know, and Jed said it was good. So it's probably a good game. It's just not as good yeah, as he wanted I it to be. If I had to it. guess. Hmm. 
Right. Uh, Favor of the Pharaoh. I I am not surprised by that. I don't understand. I don't know of anybody who like loves that game. Like I'm just a little curious that Jason thought it was going to well, be good because it looks super. I light. think because it had a lot of the stuff that he loves. He loves like dice drafting kind of stuff, and so I thought I would really like it too. And he was really pumped about it. And he's like, oh, all these different colored dice, like all the stuff you could do, and it just wasn't. I think it was too simple. Uh, yeah. And then Kingdom Builder is like you talked about this a ton. Like it's a <laughs> it's a thing from its era. Like it's Donald X made this game and it won the spiel and like it's a follow up to Dominion and so everyone was super hyped about it and then I'm positive the only people who like this game are people who are in denial about the fact that it's terrible and like they want to seem like oh yeah I get it like it's one of those like Emperor's Clothes <laughs> things like no if you don't get it like it's it's you you know I don't know like that's my thing on it sorry Scott but like it's not a good game I don't think it's that bad I mean yeah I don't I would never <laughs> choose to play. you draw one card. I it's just like it, it kind of cracks me up. This is one that I've owned twice because I wanted to see something else in it, and I got a damaged copy off of Amazon for like ten bucks, and I got rid of it a second time because it's just I don't like it. Yeah, it's just okay, but I don't think it's as bad as everyone makes it out to be. It's just you know I'm not going to own it or anything. Thank you. Good job keeping Scott in the flock with us. <laughs> um, Formula D he had as an honorable mention. I get that. Like I people love this game, and it's die rolling at the end of the yeah. day. Uh, Eastern Eastern Wonders I've never played because just Jason didn't no. like it much and I'm like I trust you Jason well especially and I think the the disappointment in that is huge because um, Spice Road was so great Super and we've good. talked to so many yep. people and it just works so well on so many different levels and then to follow up with follow it up with Eastern Wonders it yeah that was disappointment which is why I think that the third one the newest one is such a surprise. Because it's yeah. so much better than Eastern Wonders. It's like a heavier game too. It seems it is. like it's really good. Letter of Mark. I don't know anything about that one. I don't either. I don't. I don't cool. Know. <laughs> we weren't hyped about it. I guess. I don't know who uh, you played it with actually, which is what's interesting. Mombasa. Um, I get that one too. Like I like this game a lot. Um, I liked it a ton, and Jason liked it the first time he played it too, to the point where he got a copy. Um, but then I think he's like said every time he played it, it got worse and worse and worse. And I think for me, it was not that it got worse, but it was like, I wanted to set it up and play it less and less and less. And it was like, more like I can't solve this puzzle. And then I played blackout, which has a lot of the same kind of things with card play and diagramming things on the board. And I was like, Oh, this is like streamlined Mombasa 2.0 without that terrible theme about camping in Africa. So <laughs> I, I get it. Like, I think, I think it's, I think I don't mind Mombasa, but I don't need to own it if I own Blackout. Well, and I think this one, Jason, you hyped it up so much. Like you really uh-huh. did. I think there was like five episodes in a row of the podcast that you raved about it at the beginning. And so after Jason played it, he got it. But after he started, if he played it again, probably with Brandon, he didn't even play it with me because he's like, nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he, he definitely played with me and we played it really quickly and that might have been part of it too, mm-hmm. that we got it played very quickly. But like, yeah, I I think it's a good game, but I don't need to identify on Blackout. Um, So I just sold 50 games out of my library because yeah. shelf space, you know, and like none of it was stuff that anybody wanted. I don't think that listens to this show for sure. Um, <laughs> But I'm looking around my shelf and I'm like, oh, I missed some. So like these are ones that are kind of disappointments too, I guess. But like things I own that I don't want to hang on to, um, villainous is going to go away. Like oh. I, I liked it okay, but it's just so hard to explain to people. Yes. And then, I don't know. I in the first time you play it with a character, you're not sure how it works to win, and just it's tough. Um, Watson and Holmes, I wanted to like that one so badly. I want all these like solve a mystery cases to be good, and that one's okay. But I, I just wanted it to be more. Hmm. Um, I'd be willing so, to give that one a try. Yeah, well, well, man, I just, well, yeah, uh, I just wanted it to be more. And then I forget what the third one was that I was like, I'm gonna get rid of that one too. Oh, Seven Wonders, my copy of Seven Wonders. I was like, yeah, that can go in the garage sale too. <laughs> so glad I've convinced yeah. you of how bad it is. I yeah, me too. Well, that's cool. Um, games I didn't expect much out of, but were awesome. That could be another episode. Rising Five. I'm looking at it right now. That's one for sure. Dude, it's so good. I know. I, I it's space theme, and I was like, forget this, but it was really good. Yeah, I mean, I heard people hype it up, and then did Jason say it didn't suck? I was like, oh, that's an insta buy for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you and I basically did two episodes in one week. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we might have to cut this one up and do half and half. It's so long. <laughs> If Jason's throat doesn't get any better, maybe. Uh, all right. Well, we've been the talk, the talk guy and talk gal, and this has been <laughs> this has been shop talk with Katie and Joel. Yeah, hope you enjoy the last two hours, everybody. Uh, oh, this is the new format, by the way, guys. After this gets like six hundred listens this week, forget it, Jason. You're out, bud. That's right. It's over. Just kidding. I, everyone knows you're the reason why people listen, and this will get like four listens. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> right. People started to be like, oh, crap. Joel without Jason. He doesn't have his moderator there. Forget it. I'm done. Yeah, that Katie chick, she's so wordy. No one told her to shut up. And she and Joel just rambled on and on. This is terrible. They, they, spent, they spent minutes and minutes talking about their failed D&D campaigns. What's this about? <laughs> And All right. Joel's brother, man, they just wouldn't stop bragging on that kid. Yeah, no kidding. He's actually All right. your brother I like the most, which is, you know, impressive. Yeah, that's that's something. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop recording now because I've been Joel and keep gaming. Keep gaming. <laughs> We probably could talk for like two more hours. That's the problem. I'm going to stop now, though, okay? Okay.